Hi there, uh, my name's Alan Parks and today we're having a look around Glasgow at some of the places that feature in the Harry McCoy thrillers. Um, we're starting off here in Gardner Street, which is in Partick in the west end of Glasgow. And this is where um, our bold Harry lives. He lives about three quarters of the way up on the right. And as you can see, it's a pretty steep street. So um, in the winter, it's not much fun. Behind there, if you go up the hill, is Heinland, which is a very expensive and very nice part of Glasgow. And down the hill and down that way is Partick, which is, at the time, definitely wasn't so nice. So as you can see, he's a bit between two worlds. The reason I picked Gardner Street for the street for Harry to live in, um, I wish I had a better explanation than this, but um, I was writing the book and I came to the bit where I had to say where he lived and uh, I sort of looked up and I had a picture of Gardner Street on the wall. So um, Gardner Street it became. This is Dumbart Road in Glasgow on a particularly miserable day. Um, Gardner Street where Harry lives, just around the corner. So this behind me here is Victoria's, which is his local. So he more than often stops here on the way home to fortify himself for the big walk up the hill. Here we are um, at one of the most uh, expensive areas of Glasgow, Park Circus, Park Terrace. Also the area of Glasgow that looks the most like Edinburgh, which is probably not coincidental. So um, quite a lot happens here. And one of these buildings here is the establishment of um, Madame Polo, who runs a house of, um, uh, should we say, specialised ill repute, um, which tends to attract the lawyers, judges, solicitors, the higher actions of Glasgow society, so that's why it's up here. Next door to that, there is a house with a very tall roof. If you read the first book, Bloody January, you might recognise this roof as it plays a big part in the demise of one of the main characters. Okay, here we are in, um, just looking over Kelvin Grove Park in the west end of the city. Park Circus is back there. Great view if you happen to live there, if you're lucky enough. So you can see the university there, which is a large kind of ornate tower where I went uh, a very long time ago. Um, to the left of that is the art galleries, which everyone seems to think is built the wrong way around, but I'm not entirely sure that's true, but it's quite a good story. Um, and if you spin around a bit, in the distance, you might be able to see some high flats. That's the north of Glasgow. That's where, to be honest, most of the action of the books takes place. That's up there is... Springburn and um, the Milton and uh, Saracen, those sort of places, which is where um, uh, Harry spends a lot of time up that way. Um, that is a place of kind of 50s, 60s new builds, um, where a lot of people were decanted from the centre of the city and a lot of it was knocked down. Although it doesn't look much like it today, this is Glasgow's leafy west end. In the 70s, where the, the books take place, this was a kind of uh, studenty, university bohemian area. Lots of flats, lots of artists, lots of pubs. So when Stevie Cooper, who is Harry McCoy's, uh, I suppose, best friend, you would say, and also um, someone who's very firmly on the other side of the law and makes more money out of his drug and extortion deals than he knows what to do with, he decides to move here and buy a big house, which is actually the one right behind us. As it turns out, moving to the West End is not the best idea he's ever had. And this new kind of lifestyle starts to become his undoing. Boom, boom. <laughs> this is West Princess Street in um, Glasgow city centre. Woodlands, I suppose you would call it. Although people always argue about the districts of Glasgow all the time. Um, it's a very interesting street for a few reasons. Um, around about 1908, 1910, I think, there was a very famous murder and a guy called Oscar Slater was convicted, or wrongly convicted for it, and it was a huge miscarriage of justice case. Also, more importantly, and more importantly than almost everything else, Postcard Records was just down that way a bit. Um, the reason we're here is because in the new book, um, The April Dead, the first scene takes place here. Um, what happens is a bomb goes off, and this is a funny, at the 70s, this was a funny area, Woodlands, it was lots of tiny little flats, were re-rented, no one knew who the landlord was, people didn't have rent books. So when the bomb goes off here, McCoy tries to find out A, why the bomb's gone off and who owned the flat and lived in it when it happened. Hi, 
Hi, we're looking at a few more of uh, Harry McCoy's haunts in Glasgow. We're down in the salt market. Um, the Clyde's just over there, Glasgow Green's there. And the funny wee building behind me there, up to about five or six years ago, was a city mortuary. Probably the place he hates more than anywhere else in Glasgow. Um, when he has to go, he's been sick in it, he's fainted in it, he's started crying in it, anything to avoid the blood and guts. So what he normally does is make his excuses, step out the mortuary, walk around the corner and has a seat round there. So, round here is the old High Court of Glasgow. And these steps are where McCoy finds himself sitting most of the time, waiting to find out on the results of the mortuary. So he sits here waiting for Phyllis Gilroy, the Chief Medical Examiner, to come out, come round and tell him what's happened and what the results of the autopsies are. Is that boring? No, it's good.